Headscarf ban. Iran has applied the headscarf ban. Yes. It didn't work. It Ali. created massive problems. But yes, we all share the same aims with regards to how do we prevent extremism, how do we prevent terrorism, but let's also find no. more progressive ways forward uh, okay. than chasing uh, we, women sure. with burkinis. Ali Douglas, first of all. First of all, sorry, Elif, but the burkini ban is a massive diversion. A massive diversion. It was a big mistake for the French state when that happened, I agree, but this is not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that just up the road, again, a few days ago, three men with machetes went through a London street hacking at people saying this is for Allah. Okay? That's our problem. And this is always the way with this. We always have diversions, and some of these diversions we bring upon ourselves. But let me just get back to the main point. We have had historically massive issues in Europe. Nobody who knows anything about our history wouldn't pretend that. But this is a civil war within a religion which was not our war, and it has become our war. It has become our war, and Elif, you are right and wrong. You are totally wrong to say that there isn't some agreement on this. If you are a Muslim and you follow Islam, you believe that the Quran came from God, and you believe that what is in it is at least very hard to run against. And so now we have a situation in a, in a country like this one where actually the majority of British Muslims want being gay, like I am, to be made illegal now, okay? So we had a nice liberal agreement in recent decades over being gay, and now you import a community which actually thinks not just that they're not on board with gay marriage, but they think it should be made a lock-upable offence. Where does that come from? It comes from Islam, okay? Um, where, does, where, does the, where do all these things happen? They come from this, and, and I'm sorry, but it is a much worse uh, problem than we think. Okay, one poll last year showed that 50% of British Muslims would not go to the police if they knew somebody involved in an ISIS-like group was around them. Another poll showed two-thirds of British Muslims saying they would not go to the police if they knew somebody involved in extremist activity. What the hell are we doing? What the hell okay. are we doing in ignoring that? Okay. Wow, 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 folks. This face says it all, doesn't it? What Douglas Murray just says. What the hell are we doing? And that's what's happening over in Europe, folks. And it's starting to swim over, if not already has landed on our shores, across the pond, so to speak. Because where, how are we not instilling patriotism what the hell is happening with the second generation i don't understand it myself it's just it it's unfathomable to me that how does this happen if anything you would probably expect maybe the first generation would be the ones that would be saying oh no we want to impose our values our rules our cultures our morals onto the land that we've come to. But no, it's like the second generation, maybe even third generation. It's a small minority, but it doesn't take a huge amount of people to cause disruptions, to cause you know an attack of any kind, as Douglas alluded to. That actually happened there. And as he's talking, okay, about the Burkini or the Burka ban, Look, in the United, I don't think there's anyone in the United States that would tell anybody what clothes they can wear, what clothes they can't wear, because we have freedom of expression. We've got First Amendment rights. Of course, when they spill over into security, for example, that's when, for the good of the many, things have to change, because we have to be able to, I mean, you can't just hide your can't just be doing this. Photograph for a driver's license or a passport. How do you know who's really back behind the who's really in the picture? All right. So for those things, okay, exceptions are to be made. And as he said, what the French did, I don't agree with that. But that's France. Every country has can impose their own rules and regulations. Can agree or disagree, but that's what they do in that land. That's what they do in that country. That's what's going on. But again, what he's saying is, is that when he's talking about British Muslims, and I don't know if that's happened with uh, American Muslims over here, 
if they've had a similar type of survey or Pew Research done, but they said 50% would not tell any type of, you know, to any, um, you know, police department or any agency that they know something is happening, that someone's involved with ISIS, and up to two-thirds wouldn't say anything either? Just shocking. And as he's saying, Douglas, what the hell are we doing? Where are, how are we not instilling some type of Britishness into the immigrants that are coming? And why does it seem to happen in only a certain sector, a certain culture, and happening okay within those immigrants that are coming from Muslim or Islamic countries, so to speak. Anyways, let's continue. Okay, Douglas, let me... Yeah, but this is so I know, unfair. I know, Elise. So I, I, just, I will. I'm going to let you come back. I just want to press Douglas on a question because I want to know if we accept what you said, and obviously a lot of people in this room do, and I think quite a lot don't, I want to know what you do with this sentiment because you have just described a, an issue, a, a difference with not just the people who went on a murderous rampage in Borough Market, but with Britain's entire Muslim community, yeah. two or three million people. So what are you actually practically saying? You're saying that this is a faith that didn't exist here before, therefore a problem that didn't exist here before. Are you suggesting these two or three million British citizens somehow have to now leave the country? No, of course not. Of course So not. what are you suggesting? How do these people always phrase, like five against one, frame the question, so what are you suggesting? That they all have to leave Britain? Must they leave Britain, Douglas? It's a really poor British accent. <laughs> but I mean, that's how they frame the question. To say, basically frame him as the Islamophobe, as the racist, as the bigot. When Douglas basically said that what is it about that the M Muslims that are coming to Britain they're the ones that are saying, you know what? We don't like gays. A small minority, a small portion of them, not the majority of Muslims, no, 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 not at all, but a very vocal minority is starting to basically say, hey, you know what? We want to impose our religion, our values, our cultures, what we read in our scriptures, and we want to impose that on the people in the country that allowed us to come here. And that should never, ever be allowed to happen, folks. Never. Anyways, let's continue. The first thing is you admit this issue and you slow down or stop the flow. The obvious thing, if you've got a yes, problem, yes, admit to it yes. and slow the flow. Now I apologize okay? for the black. The second the thing screen, is but... obviously you try to work on the people you have here. Obviously. You can't What does work on mean? Well, you hope that over many, many generations things will change. Of course, the problem we all have is a situation like the ca case of Salman Abedi. This country gave his parents uh, uh, asylum. They fled from Libya. We gave his parents asylum. Now we're working out what his parents actually believed. But actually, uh, uh, then two weeks ago, their son goes into a Manchester uh, arena and blows up 22 people, one for every year of life this country gave him. So we could be in a situation where we're saying, OK, the first generation are fine, but we've no idea what their children are going to do. And I would very quickly make this... That's something that I take a look at all the time, is that how in the world does that next generation, how do they get that radicalized? I mean, those parents must be absolutely beside themselves. England gave them a home as refugees, as asylum seekers. And they probably worked and are working, you know, their finger, their lives to the bone so they could give their child the opportunity to be raised in a Western democracy. And somehow this child, this kid of 22 years, becomes so radicalized. How I I like I said, I don't can't, I don't know how. How does that happen? How do the you can I can understand if it's happening. Being, people are being radicalized in those countries and become terrorists. But how does it happen in a Western democracy? That's I mean, what? Where is it? Like you know, you join the gangs. 
I mean, these parents, they, these are not deadbeat parents. These are not parents that are divorced. These are not where the father is not in the house. Amazing, folks. Amazing. Anyways, let's continue. Point. Really quick, if you want the, to see the depth of this problem and a possible solution, see who the most vilified people in the Muslim community in this country, they are the reformers. Every single case, it's the reformers. Yes, yes, okay. it's the reformers. One, one, of the, one, of the, one of the London Bridge attackers, one of the London Bridge attackers last year attacked an imam who's a friend of mine in London. Okay, everybody knows this. The reformers are on the, on, on the, on the edge of this. And th this is the point. Okay. The reformers may lose. And that used to be a big tragedy for the Islamic world. And now it's a tragedy for Britain. Okay, Elif wants to come in and then we... Well, we'll have to leave it at that, folks. But it's just, again, final thoughts for me are that how is it that the second generation become radicalized? You know, parents, you know, are coming from these other countries and wanting to, and knowing that they come to these Western democracies, they're going to be able to, that's why they come there, folks. They're able to come there, start life again, work hard, build something, give to their children so their children have the ability to continue and they have a legacy then, hopefully a successful legacy of raising their children and their families for generations to come to become part of a Western democracy, become part of America or Britain or Italy or France or whatever the country is. And in America, but then you see these things happen. Oh, you know what? The kids say, oh, you know what? They, I, they, I, I had racism against me. They called me names. They made fun of my parents. They made fun of my brothers and sisters. When I was going to school, this happened. I couldn't get the right job, or I can't get a job, or this is going on, that's going on. In America, when you had the Polish people came, the Irish came, the Italians came. Um, you know, the, the Italians, the people from Britain, they all went through stages and phases. They could have all said the same thing, but they didn't turn out to be terrorists in this country and doing just absolutely, you know, despicable um, things because they were upset with what happened to them. It's amazing, folks, amazing. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. Like, share, and follow us. You know what to do. Check out our other video links above and below. We'll let you know. Uh, and I'll give you my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.